everyone. I am very, very happy to be here. Um, I had the opportunity to speak at, um, at the new conference uh, back in November, and it was a great experience. It's all, it always amazes me how uh, much people can do when they are brought together and uh, they support each other. And I am very uh, inspired by my fellow leaders and residents, uh, and also by my fellow colleagues. And one of my colleagues uh, has been a great support to the program that I started. Her name is Akila, and she's uh, here. And she she will speak a little bit uh, later uh, after I. I Present after I give my presentation, uh, and she'll touch on on what it, this program has meant to her because she's put in a lot of energy, uh, a lot of time, and a lot of effort into making this program run smoothly and making it a success. Um, so I wanted to talk about a few different things today. I also wanted to build on uh, Yusra's uh, presentation and address some of the things that that um, that were brought up then. So. When I think about uh, leadership, I go back, people always ask me, I, I'm, I tend to be really comfortable around people and I, I enjoy forming networks with people and, and I've always been, been asked, how do, you, how do you feel so comfortable? Why do you feel so comfortable? And so I've reflected on my experience in Canada after I immigrated. We, my family and I immigrated uh, to, to Canada eight years ago from Peru when I was 15 years old. And when I was in Peru, I mean, I was an adolescent. I had, you know, I, I was good at school, and, and my school only had 200 people. And so I was very well known. People knew me at my school. And when I came here, the schools were huge. I don't remember how many people were, uh, were in my school in Mississauga, but it was definitely more than 200 people. And so I wanted to build the same. I guess personal reputation. I wanted to build the same relationships that I had in Peru with my my teachers and the principal, and I wanted to build that same network here. And so I, because of the circumstances and because I knew that I only had two years before going to university, and I actually switched schools twice. So I did grade 11 in one school and then grade 12 in another school. I knew that I had to. That was precious time, and I knew that I had to get out there and meet people and build a network because I didn't know anything about scholarships. I didn't know anything about what universities were good, what universities to apply for. I wanted to get involved, I wanted to participate in the community, and I, I knew that uh, references from teachers were important, and so all of that, and I also knew, I was very cognizant of the fact that my parents wouldn't be able to support me in my career. Um, and so all of that really forced me to, to get out there and, and build those networks. And I, I think um, Yusra's point on, on building those networks strategically focusing on your goal is incredibly important and I mean by strategically I don't mean you know be, being cold-blooded but I, I do mean having having a, a mental map of where you want to where you want to go and how you can collaborate rather than take from other people how you can collaborate with with others to to build a support that you need to achieve your objectives um, so in thinking about that I spoke with someone a few years ago and she said the most important thing for people to uh, be leaders is to have and, and you know go out in the world and do their own thing is to have a really really strong foundation at home. And so when people have a really strong foundation at home, they feel safe to go and do what they need to do because if they fail, it won't matter. They'll come back and they'll still have that stability and they'll still have that safe space. And that that I think was the the seed of of my project. That's what I wanted to do with my project. I wanted to form, I wanted to build a community of women, strong women, who uh, could support each other in anything that they were doing and who could go out there and do their, do their own thing and start their own projects but then have this space where we could all uh, collaborate with each other and, and really support each other in, in our objectives and what we were doing. And so, to give you an example about some of our fellows, uh, and, and the, we have a very, very diverse group of fellows. We have uh, 12 fellows, we had over 20 people apply, and it was very hard to choose, uh, to, to choose between them who we wanted to, to include. Uh, but we have a really, really strong group of people, and uh, two of our fellows actually, they've lost, uh, they lost their parents last year. And one of them, she's a, she's a lawyer, and she was very interested in human rights law. She actually, she was studying at the University of Ottawa. And she had to, uh, she, she basically had to drop out of law school to be able to support her family. 
And so, and both her and her sister are in the program. So these are the type of individuals that we have. Uh, one of our other members, um, our other fellow, she uh, is a single mother. And she's had an incredible, she supported herself through everything. She paid her own undergraduate career and uh, she's now supporting her child. And so that's, again, that's a type, those are the type of individuals that we have in the program. And we often, uh, we have, there are many components of the program, but I will speak about the most important one, which is the, um, just having, having everyone together and having a round table. We've had the opportunity to invite several guest speakers, and Yusra, we want you to be our next guest speaker. <laughs> just, just planting a seed. But um, we, uh, we've had, you know, uh, Debbie Douglas, who is uh, the executive director at Opasi, We've had Uzma Shakir, uh, who's a director from the City of Toronto. Uh, we've also had um, Radna Ahmedvar, uh, the, uh, the director at Main Tree, and, uh, and, and Nayani Thirugaya, uh, who's, a, uh, who's, who's a very who's a, a young Tamil woman uh, who has um, created this documentary called Shadism, addressing uh, discrimination based on, based on shade. Um, and so we've had, a, again, a very diverse group of people come in and speak with us and, and they, and, and that has been, the reason why that's been the most important thing is because these individuals have a lot of experience and they, they face a lot of barriers, they've, many of the barriers that, that Uzra was addressing, these individuals have faced them. And we found it so valuable to be able to speak with them about them and to be able to, again, strategize. And I think that is that's going to be the larger theme of my of, of my presentation strategy. What what are that's what we do when we meet up, and we have the 12 individuals plus our guest speaker plus Akila and I. That's what we do. We strategize and we talk about a multitude of things. We don't just talk about labor market integration, although that has definitely been uh, an important discussion to topic of discussion. We also talk about uh, balance between family and work life. We also talk about how to deal with, uh, with accent discrimination, how to deal with other forms of discrimination. Because I completely agree, we need to, um, as, as Yusra mentioned, immigrant women have to work four times more than what the, the you know, wide Anglo-Saxon men. That's, that's definitely there. And these individuals, we, we recognize that that's there and we need to strategize in terms of what we need to do. But we also, in our thinking and in, in, in our discussions, we also place some onus on what we need to change about our society to ensure that future generations don't have to, don't, don't, don't have that onus on them, don't have that burden on them. And that has been an important part of our project. So not just focusing on what we have to do and how we need to strategize to meet those objectives and be able to integrate, but how we can be drivers of change, understanding that our barriers are gonna shouldn't be faced, and and having that ideal idealist thinking that in the future we can try and mitigate the, the negative impact that these can have on on the future generations. Um, so building networks has definitely been important, and in this, uh, in, in the meetings that we have, uh, people, we we talk about again, we talk about everything. When we met with right now, we talked about being politically involved and the the importance of, of uh, belonging to a party, even if you don't really believe in what the party in everything that the party's saying. Just you know, get involved and see what it's like, and you will likely not like it but at least you'll know how people are thinking, you know what people are doing, because eventually, we, so something that right now always says is you need to learn how to talk to the yin and the yang. So you need to learn how to talk to everyone. And the only way to learn how to talk to everyone is by knowing everyone. So this goes back to, I, I said I was gonna build on Yusra's presentation. <laughs> this goes back to Yusra's point. We need to know what the quote unquote Canadian culture is, and we need to learn that. And that's the only way that we're going to effectively strategize and effectively get to, to uh, our goal and meet our objectives. And so that's, that's, that's part of it, Belo belonging to a, a, um, a political party, doing canvassing. And the amount of skills that you learn with that are incredible. And not only that, but you also expand your network. So there are many goals that can be met by just one action. So that's what we discussed with Rana. Uh, we, with Nayani, we talked more about the uh, the discrimination side of, side of things and the, 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 the barriers that we're facing, which 
I think it's, it's also important to acknowledge, um, you know, immigrant, immigrants work really hard, they work harder, and, and I've heard this many times, we work harder than anyone, I mean, there's, I know my family has worked really hard, I work really hard, I, I don't, um, and, and again, you know, we have to work as immigrant, as um, immigrant women, we have to work four times more than, or more than, than other individuals uh, in Canada. Um, and so, at, at the same time, that resilience, we, we need to take care of ourselves. And so, while acknowledging the importance of that resilience, it's also, I think there's also, we, we need to create a space to discuss the, some of the barriers that we're facing and how, how that is affecting us. And that's what we created when Nayani came and spoke with us and we watched her documentary, Shiitism. Have you, has, have you heard of it? Do you, do you know what I mean by Shiitism? So Shiitism, um, sorry? Yeah, no? we do. I said, sorry. You do? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. So, no, no, no. Yeah. So, uh, Shiitism is uh, essentially the, uh, um, in, in her documentary, she addresses how individuals may internalize uh, this discrimination and so um, how the, the, someone's uh, physical appearance, but the, the shades of color. Uh, can influence how someone, someone's uh, personal confidence and how someone views themselves and how other people view them as well. And so in her documentary, she asks um, her little cousin how, uh, if she thinks she's beautiful. And, she's, and the little cousin says, no, I don't think I'm beautiful because she's darker than Naomi is. And uh, the, the cousin tells her, I think you're beautiful because you're lighter. So, and she, she talks about how um, in her family, you know, people will say, don't go out in the sun, just stay in, like, make sure you, you, you know, cover up and make sure that you don't get any, any sunlight. Uh, and, and that is a very, that, that is a reality, that is a very real experience that impacts um, how we, how we engage with the world. And so when addressing economic integration, we can't help but to address these issues. I mean, when we talk about, and, and I, I wrote, you'll see, you'll see in, the, in the pamphlet, that um, I wanted to particularly address uh, three barriers, language and communication, uh, lack of opportunity, and lack of confidence. Well, the, well the, the point that I'm making in terms of shadism and in terms of discrimination intimately is, are intimately related to lack of confidence and intimately affect lack of confidence. And so it was very important for us to, dis excuse me, to discuss that. Um, and, uh, and those are the types of conversations that we had and we've, have, we've built a really, we've built a family and that, that was my main, that was my main, uh, my main objective. We wanted, we wanted to have, so I'm getting the signal, but <laughs> I, I can only fit in one more sentence. Um, so that is, and this is a great point to end on because uh, our objective, um, what Akila has helped me create is is a group of people that is really a family, and I, we both feel so energized after we, um, after we meet everyone. Everyone feels so energized. The woman that um, who is a single mother, she once she she, she told us uh, at one of the sessions, I wasn't gonna come today because I had a horrible day at work. I've had a horrible week. Everything has gone wrong. I wasn't gonna come today, but my son told me, Mommy, you're always so happy when you go. You come back so happy, so you should go. And so I came, and I feel so much better. So it's it's that type of relationship that we've been able to build, to build that is a relationship strongly founded on support, a relationship strongly founded on trust. That really, I think, is is what will what will it not only encourage leadership, leadership, but will encourage these women to connect with each other and find common, commonalities and try to trigger some change that will benefit, again, not just themselves, but future generations. Thank you. Thank you.